have a look at what your offer is, have a look at your ad copy, have a look at your freebie. Is it something people want? Because chances, most times it's often that. That is why your cost is really high and that is why people aren't downloading it. Welcome to How to Build a Profitable Nutrition Business. If you love nutrition and you love helping people and you want to be in the game long enough to keep doing that, then this is the podcast for you. Let's get into it. Today's guest is none other than my business partner and wife, Stacey Hughes. So Stace almost single-handedly built our business from just myself and her to a team of 18 in the space of about four years. And it was just primarily driven by her skill set in social media marketing. And, and to the point that when we sold our business, Stacey now has her own company called StaceyHughes.co, where she helps other entrepreneurs build their business through Facebook ads and Instagram ads. Stacey has clients all over the world. She's been to invite-only events at Facebook headquarters. She's been invited to TikTok headquarters, and she's really developed quite a name for herself in the industry. And so I've managed to secure her for a short period of time to help budding entrepreneurs in the nutrition space learn how to get the biggest bang for their buck in Facebook marketing. Let's get into it. Welcome back to another episode of How to Build a Profitable Nutrition Business. Today, I have a very special guest who has been on here numerous times in our very short history. This is my business partner and wife, Stacey Hughes. And today, I've managed to lock her down to talk about Facebook ads. Stace, this is your bread and butter. You help grow our dietetic practice significantly through what you'd learned through Facebook ads. And then when we sold our business, you took this on full time. And now you've got quite a successful business with clients all over the world with StacyHughes.co. Thanks for accepting your husband's invite to come back on the podcast. <laughs> I'm happy to be here and happy to be here podcasting with you on your birthday, your 44th birthday. Happy birthday, Chris. Are you though? It's just taken a while to, to <laughs> get into your schedule, but thank you. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about, Stace, is kind of rewinding to where we were, right? Like so back when we started our business, money was yeah. tight. We knew that social media marketing gave us our best bang for buck. We knew everyone was on there. It was where our market was, but we had to extract every benefit out of the dollar that we invested into it. And so you immersed yourself into Facebook marketing and learning as much as you could, join groups, done courses, and to the point where you, you are where you are today, let, let, let's pretend we're starting a business again, okay? Mm -hmm. What would you suggest for us to do from as a nutrition business to grow our business and grow our audience and basically yeah. generate revenue through Facebook? Yeah, so the first thing I would say is growing your list is probably one of the most important things to do. So growing your database and you can further nurture them once they're on your list. But if we keep people on Facebook and Instagram, then we we have to deal with whatever gets thrown at us by Mark Zuckerberg. They can shut down Facebook groups at any time. So best is to get everyone onto our own database where we then own that information. So one so thing mean, I would have done in the mean, very beginning is focus on that. So you mean collecting their email? Collecting their data, yeah. So their name and email and giving them something in return for that. So that's probably the one thing that I would focus on is creating that lead magnet or freebie that people want. The ideal customers that you want to work with, the clients that you want to work with, or even the referral partners that you want, creating something of value or something free that you can give to them in exchange for their name and email address. Okay, so if my niche is diabetes, I might say top 10 foods to help control my blood glucose yes, levels, yep. create yeah. a resource. They yes. are paying for that with their name and email and maybe phone yes. number, maybe whatever. Yep. So I'm, I'm collecting their details and building a yes. list from that. Yeah, and then you can talk to them on email, with an email nurture sequence where you can explain who you are, what you stand for, why you're the best person to help them with their diabetes. So always focusing on that client and telling them why they should work with you. And then you can, once you nurture them a bit, then you could either give them some more value or make an offer to them with your packages for them to come and see you, that type of thing. 
So just to be clear there, I've created the resource. They've given me their name and email. I'm then nurturing them offline with yeah. an email. On sequence. email, yes. Yep. And giving them your offer. So don't do ads for your offer because they're quite expensive ads to run. When you're trying to get money off people, you're doing those ads to cold people. It's very expensive to do that. So I wouldn't worry about those type of ads, especially if money is tight, your marketing dollar is tight. So I would just focus your ad campaigns on building your list and the campaigns that you would run to do that are called lead campaigns. So it's what you would um, deliver as an ad your freebie. So there's two ways you can do it. You can send them to your website where you collect that name and email information and you deliver your freebie, or you can do it as a form on Facebook and Instagram and you collect their name and email and deliver that freebie. Now, if I have been attentive to the information you've told me in the past, is it best to keep them on Facebook because the algorithm rewards that? Facebook and and, and these platforms essentially don't want people to leave. Yeah, um, and that is true to some extent. But honestly, there's not one campaign that is better than the other when it comes to lead. So I can't definitively say a form is better than sending them to a landing page. The only way is by testing and running the campaigns, getting that cost per lead and working out which one costs less than the other. So I would only, I would definitely say use the form if you don't have a website. If you don't have a website yet, we don't have a CRM or a database set up yet, I would use the form because it's easy. You set the form up, right. you get in that lead information, you can deliver your PDF or whatever it is, or an email sequence of training. You can, yeah, do that on Facebook and then you can see the leads inside of your meta business suite. So you don't need another system. Uh-huh. If you don't have that, I would say, yeah, using a landing form is a lot easier because you're creating that form on your website. So if you use Kajabi, you create that form, you send people to that landing page, they fill out that form, and then that's counted as a lead. And Kajabi sends that information back to Meta. And the way that they do that is via your Meta Pixel. So it's called a data set now. So they you put a bit of code on your website. And then that bit of code is tracking what everybody's doing on your website. So that information is fed back to Meta. And what about something like ManyChat, which mm-hmm. would then be keeping them on the platform because you can now take them into Messenger and nurture them that way? Would that be yeah, a good you idea? Do that. Yeah, 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 you can set up ManyChat. You can DM the word and all of that type of thing. And what a lot of people that I know do, you DM the word and then you send them the link to your landing page to get them to sign up as a lead. Or you can just keep them inside ManyChat. That's fine as well. So am I right in saying that this is a cold audience, right? So if I was just throwing an offer, like book a consult with me, it's going to yep. cost me a lot of money to convert yep. because these people don't know who People I don't am. even know you. Yeah. So it's about creating something of value that is going to showcase who you are and your expertise. And it's something that they want. Maybe if it's a bariatric patient, what resource or what would they download if they're thinking about weight loss surgery, for example, and then you can further nurture them on email. So think about who your niche is and what they want. And you could use ChatGPT to come up with some ideas and brainstorm some freebie or resource ideas and then create that from using your expertise and then deliver that to them via a lead ad. So you're utilizing audiences and you're showing that ad to new people. And if it's people in the radius from your clinic, then you can set that up as well and deliver that freebie to them. Okay, so you can do the geographic targeting. Geographic location, geographic targeting from a location radius or suburbs located where you want to see people. Or if you want to see people online, you don't need to do that. Could you do it via interests like bariatric, for example, or diabetes? No, definitely not. Yeah. Why why definitely not? With privacy now, there's no detailed targeting limits being taken away all the time. So, yeah, you definitely can't do that. Oh, 
Yeah, or you could do interest, maybe interested in diabetes or a diabetes magazine or a diabetes website or something. Maybe I don't know, but they yeah they used to be a lot more targeting, but they have taken a lot of that away. So don't think about that's kind of like the old way you used to do ads. So don't think about that. Think about just keeping your audience broad and you're attracting the right person with your ad copy and your ad. So your image, your video, your carousel and your ad copy, that is going to attract your ideal customer. Okay, so I know you get asked this question, and I know you get frustrated with this question, so I'm, I'm going to ask it also so you can give the answer, not to frustrate you because I don't try and do that, is, is <laughs> if you're frustrated, is what's a good cost per lead? Yeah, that is really difficult to say, and you don't know what, a good cost per lead is until you run your ad and get that data. And then you work on reducing that cost per lead. There's just so many factors that determine it, like your niche, yeah, who responds to your ad. So the quicker someone, res- your ad gets shown to a number of people, the quicker that they respond to the ad, the lower your cost per lead is going to be. And then the more people that respond to that ad, Facebook's going to show that ad again to similar people to that. So it goes out and then goes and finds more people like that and shows that ad, that whatever number responds to, that's going to bring down your cost per lead. So I don't know the answer to this because I've asked you this question, but back in 2016, I, w- I would have really struggled with the way Facebook works, but I know what you're going to answer here in terms of you've just got to let the algorithm work. So initially, yeah. right, let, let's say money's tight, we've put in $100 and we're not getting good results. It's really hard for me as someone that may not have much money. I'm just started this business. I've got all these costs to go, oh, just trust the algorithm. What, like I'm not getting many yeah. leads. What's your advice there? Is it just. Yeah, I wouldn't say trust the algorithm in that case. I would say have a look at what your offer is, have a look at your ad copy, have a look at your freebie. Is it something people want? Because chances, most times, it's often that. That is why your cost is really high. And that is why people aren't downloading it. Or is giving it, their information for it. Do you, don't you also have to give the algorithm a bit of time to work things out? No? Oh, you do. Yes, you do. You wouldn't make that decision in the first 24 to 48 hours. But just say you run your ad for a week, you've done $10 a day or $20 a day, and you're not getting good cost per lead or no one's downloading your thing, I would look at your freebie. What it is. It's yeah, not. Right. It's generally these days, very rare is it your audience. It's always what it is because meta have so many data points on all of us so they know who to show your ad to i know it's hard to think that but they do and it's but what they're showing to them that's what you've got to focus on so what you're saying is it's me it's not them it's my problem Mm. okay that is hard to take as well okay (laughs) Um, so it's your freebies and and how i know this also with clients we do experiment where we do four different or three different freebies in the one campaign one might get a dollar cost per lead and the other two are like five six dollars it's the thing that was a dollar that people are responding to yeah people are engaging with and so we're so then like when it comes to then converting to sales, so these are just leads and then I'm nurturing them yeah. via email yes. um, or messenger, whoever we're doing it. Are you yeah. saying like completely don't ever worry about the offers online? Yes. Yes, I it's am. Just, it's just too expensive. Even if they're a warm morning. So now that they've opted in, can I not target those people? You could. Yeah, you can. You absolutely can. But again, it's um, an experiment. And if you are just starting out and your budget is low, then what happens typically, what you pay, you're going to receive that in revenue. So if your offer is a $97 offer, you, it's generally going to cost you $97 to get that $97 sale, even if it's warm, even because you're just starting out and your audiences are probably quite small anyway when it comes to warm audiences. It's not always the case, but generally it is. And that means whatever you're selling, it's not going to be profitable, is it? If you're, It's costing you the same amount to receive that income. So emails that's cheaper. Mm. Emails way cheaper. So it's easier. And then you can also work out, yes, I paid X amount to get that lead. And then I nurtured them on email and sold them something. So how much can I now spend? What's my earnings per lead? How much can I now spend to get that sale? Yeah, got ya. All right. That has helped. I think 
I, I would be confident to go ahead and do that. There's a little bit of setting up behind the scene. I get really frustrated when I use Ads Manager. Like someone like yourself help people, but obviously if I'm just starting out, that's a cost. Yeah, you know. yeah. For that, obviously, I have packages where it's a complete um, ads management service, but I also have um, packages where I can help you on Zoom. I take control of your computer through Zoom and I set your campaign up for you. Do and so I make sure everything's set up correctly. Get your pixel set up. Verify your domain. Create your ad account if you need to, and connect your Instagram account, your Facebook account. All of those things are set up correctly. And then I create your campaign for you. So is that um, recorded? Okay. So if you're recorded. doing that with me, yeah. So I, I can pay you to do it for me, but I'm there with you recorded. So then I can do it next time. Is that? Yes, yeah, exactly. That. We do it together. It's recorded. You've got access, lifetime access to that recording and you can, yeah, touch base with me again. I also give you one month's access to my fab ads club where you can get additional support and ask me questions on zoom and then if you want to stay in the club it's 97 dollars a month after that cool all right we'll put those links down below thank you for giving up your time on my birthday this is my birthday present probably definitely <laughs> All right. Thanks, Stace. Hopefully that helps someone Love. setting up their own Facebook or you know Instagram marketing and helps them build a business. Profitable one. Amazing. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Bye. Do you find this podcast valuable? There may be other nutrition professionals out there will also. If you like, share and subscribe, it's going to help other nutrition professionals make an impact on the world just like you. Thanks.